How to install Jenkins on Windows. Although it is recommended that you install Jenkins controllers on Linux-based servers, not everybody uses Linux. That's shocking, right? There are a number of shops that are still Microsoft Windows only. Windows is fully supported and widely used, but there are complications in Windows environments, like the file system locking semantics, that make it more difficult to run a controller on Windows. Fortunately, it is still possible to install and configure Jenkins controllers on Windows servers. Here's today's starting point. I have a Windows server. Specifically, I have a Windows Server 2022. I just happen to be hosting this on AWS, but whether you're self-hosting or using cloud-hosted VMs, the steps in this video should apply to any version of Windows. The first thing that we're going to need to do is install Java, and specifically the JDK. So inside of Edge here, I already have uh, Doptium.net opened up, and I'm going to download Tamarin 11, because at this point, Jenkins only runs with either JDK 8 or JDK 11. So I'm going to select the latest release and let that download into my downloads folder. And that will take just a moment. And then I'm also going to go ahead while we're here and downloading things, let's go ahead and download Jenkins. So I'm going to say Jenkins.io, click on download. And then I'm going to stick with the LTS version. And I'm going to select Windows. And then that automatically starts downloading there as well. And it's almost finished. And now all of our downloads are done. And that's great. So now we can go ahead and get started installing. So let's go over to our downloads folder. And let's take a look at the files that we have. Let me go ahead and minimize Edge. There we go. So first off, let's go ahead and install JDK 11. And also remember, you want to install the JDK and not the JRE. So we'll get the JDK, we'll do the installation, we'll click on Next, and we're going to make a couple of small changes here. Uh, actually, just one. We're going to set the Java home variable. So we will do that. So JDK with hotspot is on, add to path is on, associate jar is on, set Java home is on, and then the Java soft Oracle is off. And like I said, there is, I said one, but there's really two. I want to go ahead and change the location of our installation. Now this is up to you. This is what I like doing. So I'm going to say C, uh, here we go, tools slash JDK. And let's get the right slash there. So it's C tools JDK. I like installing all of my tooling inside of a tools directory. You may have your own preferences. I'm just following what I like to do. So C tools JDK and then the JDK specific version here. So we'll click on OK. And so all that still looks good. Location looks good. We'll click on Next. Click Install. This will take just a few seconds. And then once this is complete, we'll double check a few other things. OK, that's done. We'll click on Finish. So that installation for the JDK is done. However, the configuration is not complete yet. We want to modify our environment variables, Java home and path. So let's go ahead and go down here and type environment. And then what we will get, env, edit the system environment variables and click on environment variables. And what we want to modify is Java home. The first thing that we want to do on the Java home is we want to remove the trailing slash. So it's just going to be C tools, JDK, JDK 11, hotspot, no trailing slash. And then in our path, what we want to do is we want to modify our path to change this to reference the Java home environment variable. So we'll get rid of hotspot and replace that with Java underscore home. I think that looks good. Yep. Java underscore home bin. Yep. So we'll click on OK, that looks fine, and we will click on OK. So let's go and open up a command prompt, and let's take a look at our values. So for Java-version, we have our JDK version, that's right. Let's go ahead and echo out our Java home value, which is that, and also echo out, whoops, Echo out our path. 
And that also looks correct. Now to get ready to install Jenkins, one of the things that we're going to need is an account that has the ability to log on as a service. And in my example today, I'm going to be using the administrator account, which, which is how I'm logged into this server. You might want to set up a standard user account that you are using to manage your services. But for my example today, I'm just using administrator. And the way that we do that is we're going to open up local system policy. So I'm going to look for local security policy, excuse me. I'll go ahead and close this while that's coming up. And once local security policy opens up, what we want to do here is we're going to click on local policies. And then we're going to click on user rights assignments. And from here, what we want to do is go down to log on as a service. So log on as a service. And we can see here, NT service, all services, we need to add a user or a group. And right now, what I want to do is I want to add administrator. And we click on check names. And then it resolves out the full name. That's OK. Click on OK. Now we can see that the administrator user has been added. We'll click on Apply and click on OK. Now we're ready to install Jenkins. So let's go back over to our downloads directory. We'll close these up first. And we'll double click on Jenkins. We're going to click on Next. And again, much like what I did with the JDK, I'm going to put this into a different directory. This is Tools. Oops, I forgot the slash, so let's get the slash back. There we go, Tools Jenkins, that's good. Next, now we're going to run the service as a local or domain user, which we are. So in this case, my account is administrator. And my password, I need to go copy, here we go. Grab my password, I'm gonna paste this in, and I'm gonna click on test credentials. And if it's successful, we get a green check mark. So, so far, so good. Click on Next. We're going to leave the default port number of 8080. We're still going to test the port to make sure it's fine, and it is. Click Next. We're going to select the path of our JDK, which this is the path for our JDK, so it's already aware of that. We'll click on Next. And here, when we click on Next, we do not want the service to start up automatically because we're going to be making some more configuration changes before we actually start the service. So I'm going to say unavailable for start service. So start service is off, firewall exception is off. Let's click on Next. So now we're ready to go and click on Install. And this will take just a couple of seconds. And now we're done. And we'll click on Finish. Now there's a few more steps that we need to do in order to configure Jenkins before we actually do the startup. So I'm going to go back over to where it was installed, which in our case was in C Tools Jenkins. So C Tools Jenkins. And we can see we have a handful of files here, but the file that we want to modify first is our Jenkins XML. So if we go ahead and modify this file, we'll say Edit. And I'll slide this over here a little bit handful of things we want to change. First off, again, deciding where we want our files to live is an important thing. So I want to control where my Jenkins home directory is, which is where all of the data will live. So I'm going to say C data Jenkins underscore, whoops, Jenkins underscore home. My choice, that's where I want it to live. For the executable, I want to change this to be my Java home environment variable. You could choose to not use the Java home environment variable. You could have a specific version of Java that you include here. Again, completely up to you. I'm making the choice that I want to use the Java home version of Java that is on this machine. And then for arguments, I'm going to make a few changes here. First off, we have 256 meg. That's going to be way too small. So I'm going to go ahead and copy over some values that I already have ready to go here. So I'm going to replace my XMX with a bunch of configurations. So first off, I'm setting my min and max to 3 gig. I'm setting headless to true. I'm preferring IPv4 over IPv6. I'm setting up a tempter, so that way I'm not using Windows temp. I'm going to set up my specific temp directory. 
I'm going to go ahead and set my time zones for America and New York for both of these, and then we're back into what was already there. Now let's go down to the end of this line. We're going to leave the dash jar for the WAR file. HTTP port is 8080, but we want to change our web root. Our web root is going to be C Tools Jenkins WAR. So we're going to replace web root with a different reference location. And what we have here is a web root of C Tools Jenkins WAR. And we have a plugin root. So our plugins are going to extract out into this directory of C Tools Jenkins plugins. And then we have our arguments, and that's all good. So we added a bunch of dash D's at the front. We're adding plugin root at the end and making a modification to web root. Now, there's one more change that we need to make to this file. And we need to change the location of our PID file to be C Tools Jenkins. Again, all of the changes that we've made to this file are primarily locations of exactly where I want my data to live or where I want extracted files or file caches to live. So all of that is now within this Jenkins.xml file. So let's go ahead and save this file and go ahead, we'll close it up. And let's go and start our service. So if we go ahead and look for services, what we're going to see here, I'll slide this over. We're going to look for Jenkins, which is right here. It's set up for administrator, which we can sort of see there. There's administrator. Let's go ahead and start this. It says it's running, but in reality, if we refresh it, we're going to see that it didn't start. Well, how do we know what's going on? Well, since we set up our locations for everything to be in C Tools Jenkins, our log files are also here. So let's take a look at the log files that were just created. We have a Jenkins wrapper file, a Jenkins out file, and a Jenkins ERR file. If we first take a look at Jenkins out, what we see here is this is running from the war file. That's easy and good to go. If we take a look at our wrapper, we can see here that this is for the service starting up and all of that looks pretty good. Uh, the PID didn't exist, that's fine because it didn't exist on startup, but then it recorded the PID, that's okay. But if we take a look at our error file or ERR file, what we can see here is Jenkins has failed to create a temporary file in C Tools Jenkins temp. So one thing that we need to do before we start the service is we need to create a temp dir inside of the C Tools Jenkins folder. So TMP, that's there. Now let's go back over to our services and start that back up. So we can see it's running. I'll just do a refresh here just to see it is running. That's great, it stayed running. So now if we take a look, we can see our Jenkins PID file is here. If we take a look again at our ERR file, then what we're going to see is it's starting up and starting the plugins or starting the installation of the plugins. So let's give this just a few moments to start up and then we will continue with the installation. And now our server is up and running. And in fact, we can see that it's fully up and running and we can go through and go ahead and do our setup. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna click on my browser. I'm going to go to localhost 8080 and if you're familiar with installing Jenkins, this screen is going to look very familiar to you. As it starts up, we are going to be asked for the password. And the password here is going to be what we just copied out of our log file. We'll click on continue. And we will never save that. Install suggested plugins. This will take just a few moments. So we'll give it just a minute to download all of these plugins, get it all extracted. Everything's gonna look pretty good here. Now that the plugins are installed, let's go ahead and create our user. And click Save and Continue. Click Save and Finish and start using Jenkins. So now we can see here that we are ready to start using Jenkins on our Windows-based controller. One last thing I want to show you is we take a look at Task Manager and we go into more details. What we're going to see here under our memory, if we sort it by memory, we can see that our OpenJDK platform binary, which is the OpenJDK that's running our Jenkins process, is using right at about three gig, which is what we specifically set 
inside of our Jenkins XML file. Now that you've done the installation for Jenkins on Windows, what should you be careful about backing up? It really boils down to four items. You're going to need your Jenkins installer, your JDK installer. You'll also want to make sure you're backing up your Jenkins home directory, which in our case was cdata Jenkins underscore home. And finally, the one file you don't want to forget is the Jenkins.xml file that lives, in our case, in C tools Jenkins, Jenkins.xml. If you have any questions or comments, you can reach out to us on Twitter at CloudBees. If this video was helpful to you, give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to CloudBees TV yet, why not? Take a moment, click on that subscribe button, and then ring that bell, and you'll be notified anytime there's new content available on CloudBees TV. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next video.